Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Interstate Water Dispute Amendment Bill 2017. To discuss the issue, I have with me Dr. Amarjeet Singh, Secretary, Minister of Water Resources, and Mr. Mohan Katarki, Advocate, Supreme Court. Now for the highlights. The Interstate Water Dispute Amendment Bill 2017 to set up a permanent tribunal instead of multiple tribunals. The bill proposes a time limit of four and a half years for adjudication of any interstate water dispute. Centre proposes to introduce a mechanism to resolve disputes amicably by negotiations through Dispute Resolution Committee DRC. The Interstate River Water Disputes Amendment Bill 2017 proposes to dissolve all tribunals on interstate water disputes and replace it with permanent dispute resolution mechanism in form of a single tribunal. As per the existing law, for each interstate water dispute, there is a provision for creating a tribunal with no prescribed timelines. The Kaveri Water Disputes Tribunal has been in existence for the last 26 years and the Ravi Bias Water Disputes Tribunal has been in existence for over 30 years. But both have not been able to solve the dispute as there is no provision in the existing law of a fixed time limit for adjudication by a tribunal on account of increase in demand for water by the states. The Interstate River Water Disputes are on the rise. The Interstate River Water Dispute Act 1956 provides for a legal framework to address such disputes but suffers from many drawbacks. Under the existing law, a separate tribunal has to be established for each interstate river water disputes. Of the eight tribunals that were appointed, only three have been able to resolve the dispute. The others continue to exist. All this is likely to change with the new law. The important thing is that these resolutions have to take place or the disputes have to be resolved within a time frame. So time frame has been prescribed. It is not as if you know it will, they will keep on lingering for 10 years or 20 years. The bill seeks to create a robust legal framework and a vigorous institutional architecture to adjudicate interstate river water dispute. The bill proposes to introduce mechanism to resolve dispute amicably by negotiation through Dispute Resolution Committee DRC, which will have to give its report time in 18 months time. If matter remains unresolved, then it will be sent to the tribunal for resolution. The tribunal have to give its award in maximum three years time. The tribunal is allowed to have several benches. The members of the tribunal will have a maximum retirement age of 70. So as and when somebody attains the age of 70, that member retires and in his place somebody else is uh, appointed. So uh, in a way the major complaint of the tribunal going on an unending expedition has now been removed. The centre has been empowered to appoint an agency to maintain database on water at the national level for each river basin, land and agriculture. It will have the power to make rules through which water will be distributed during stressful situation during shortage. This bill was introduced in Lok Sabha by the Minister of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation, Uma Bharti, on March 14, 2017. The Interstate Water Dispute Amendment Bill 2017 deals with scarcity of water, appointment of assessors and maintenance of data bank with regards to each river characteristics. Nishtha Malhotra with cameraman Santosh Yadav for Rajya Sabha Television. A good step, a move forward, but much more could have been done. Like for example, simplification of adjudication, mediation and arbitration process being provided for and appeals uh, to the Supreme Court. So specificity relating to these issues. And uh, sir, I'll come straight away to you, uh, to you because you were the one who pointed uh, these uh, issues out. Uh, one by one, sir, simplification of adjudication. How can the bill at this point provide for it? Well, uh, when I say simplification of adjudication, what I really mean is 
simplification of the procedure involved in the adjudication of the water disputes. Mm -hmm. Today, what we see in the water dispute is they are tried like any other civil case. The documents have to be marked, oral evidence to be collected, witnesses are put into an elaborate cross-examination. This consumes a lot of time. We have the, some of the new uh, tribunals like CLO tribunal we saw in Hamburg which resolves the disputes between the nation with regard to the sea disputes. The procedure is quite fast and quick. The evidence is collected by, uh, instead of all three judges sitting and collecting the evidence, one judge collects the evidence. Sometimes you have to do it in an informal manner. You don't have to sit at 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Maybe experts are not available because these are all some of them are very uh, eminent experts. You may have to sit, sit after office hours. So it should be more informal than the present formal process. This will help in expediting the process and able to get the best out of the people. That's what I think out of my Dr. experience. Dr. Singh, how feasible is it when you are drafting a bill and when you are trying to codify what he is suggesting in terms of black and white, how easy or difficult is it? And also it is going to be subject to the entire parliamentary approval. So where this will fall or be acceptable, no one knows. So is, it, is there an attempt to keep away from those areas where you could get into, uh, you know, a bill could get trapped and not actually go through the parliament process if there are several issues provided for? Is that a possibility? See, the experience of the eight tribunals out of which three have successfully given the award, uh, three are still working on it and two have been long pending has been that we need very good data on the rivers. What is the usage of data? How effectively it is being utilized? How much precipitation is there? What are the different states contributing? How much are they using? So a very important provision under the bill is that the Ministry of Water Resources shall make all efforts to get the best available data, get the best people and make that available data available if need be to the tribunals or to the dispute resolution committee. Does the bill provide for that? There is a there is a specific mention that we need to have very good data for dispute resolution. What we've done is there is a <coughs> UNESCO Institute of Hydrology, which mm -hmm. is one of the best in the world, which keeps data for all river water disputes. What's happening? What kind of data? What kind of analysis? Mm -hmm. Their uh, senior professor was here last week. We are working with them very closely to ensure the water resources information system of the ministry incorporates all those learnings and that data is available specifically to the three major disputes which are currently, four major disputes which are currently pending, the SYL in the north, the Kaveri, the Krishna between uh, Telangana and Andhra and the uh, Mahanadi between Godavari and uh, between Odisha and Chhattisgarh. So we hope to make the data available which will make decision making more objective and easier. That's one. Mm -hmm. The second part is we feel that the dispute resolution committee, this mechanism has been specified in great detail and I think that goes a long way forward. It goes a great way forward. There is flexibility to get the best people on board. The it was not there in the earlier bill? Earlier, the, if, you, if a state referred to the government, the state could make attempts through the, its own officers for one year. And if the dispute was not resolved in one year, it had to be referred to a tribunal. Okay. Now, here is a specific effort made through the dispute resolution committee, which can have experts, the engineers in chief of the two states, powerful spokesperson of the two states, the chief secretaries, or anybody else mm -hmm. who, who uh, is empowered enough to give the point of view of the state. So, there is a real possibility of arbitration happening, of, of a mediation happening. And the process being resolved amicably, amicably through negotiation. Do you agree, sir, when he points, when he says that there is a possibility within the DRC, that brings us to the second point that you were trying to make, that there is no provision for mediation and arbitration in the bill, which could, had it been provided, things could have been much more dynamic and could have moved faster, sure. right? So, do you agree that the DRC, as it has been provided for, can include the concept of mediation and arbitration. No, I don't agree. This is really a same as the mediation and arbitration as we understand in the legal uh, parlance. But certainly this is a, a process of institutionalization of the negotiation process. The present act 
provides for negotiations to be conducted and only if the government of india is satisfied that the dispute cannot be solved by negotiation it has the authority to refer a dispute to the tribunal so now what the amendment intends to do is that institutionalize this negotiation in the form of a drc that is dispute resolution committee where you'll have the nominees of the states and the nominees of the center they discuss thrash out and uh, come to some kind of an understanding or may not come to an understanding and thereafter if the government of india feels that the dispute needs to be resolved by a tribunal then it refers but the my problem is which mr uh, amranjit also pointed out at the initial stage these members of the drc really do not have that kind of a political authority to negotiate for the states see water disputes are very complex and sensitive politically very sensitive let me tell you uh, one statement here and there really makes great difference therefore when somebody comes from the state to negotiate as it happens in america they they nominate a representative here there is a senior cabinet minister or a chief secretary at least who has the authority to speak for the state to come and negotiate negotiation doesn't mean discussing the data in a strict uh, or technical issues or legal issues as lawyers discuss or in the political discuss. give and take it is basically give and take in the spirit of federal cooperation you have to give and take something so therefore at that stage a person requires an authority therefore i feel this drc is fine but they must make it very clear the drc means uh, it will have the representatives of the state who is either a senior cabinet minister or a chief secretary of the state so that he has the authority to come and speak for his state would you like to add to that because yeah, that's, I think uh, that's that's a fair point mm -hmm. but that is the experience the supreme court set up a committee a high level committee for kaveri he is aware of that mm -hmm. in that committee the chairman cwc was chairing that committee the chief secretaries of the two states the engineers in chief of the two states and we propose a similar kind of mechanism we want people who can express state's view point take a stand give and take so i i feel it may not be the legalese may not be satisfied as mm -hmm. mohan is saying but definitely there is room in the drc ah, to sit that's together that's the point sir to sit so, together and work it out and work it out and also it doesn't prohibit the the bill and, and doesn't this, and the second part is the data which is made available by the ministry uh -huh. we will make sure that correct data is made available on the basis of which the two sides can take a uh, informed decision so you, you uh, i mean uh, the arbitration and thing it is not really kept away there is an or there is room for it so um, and that is what uh, sir's point is we'll uh, come back to uh, the same issue after time for us to head into a break when we return we will talk about the other provisions of the bill The Interstate River Water Disputes Amendment Bill 2017 proposes that the tribunal will have a chairperson, vice chairperson and other judges nominated by the Chief Justice of India. The center may appoint two experts serving in the Central Water Engineering Services. The Interstate Water Dispute Law of 1956 allows for setting up of a separate tribunal to solve each interstate river dispute. There is no provision in the law to fix an upper age limit for the chairman or a member of a tribunal. There is no mechanism for continuation of work in an event of any vacancy in the office of the chairman or a member of a tribunal. The proposed law takes care of these issues. One of the major problems that has talked this uh, interstate water disputes problem is that one is this prolonged uh, litigation processes. And the second one is the frequent recurrence of these disputes. So, because now it is a permanent tribunal, um, you know there is a there is an avenue for the states to uh, go and you know uh, have their grievances re redressed. The Interstate River Water Disputes Amendment Bill 2017 provides for a chairperson, a vice chairperson, and not more than six nominated members from the judges of the Supreme Court and High Court for the Tribunals. The Centre will be able to appoint two experts from Central Water Engineering Service not below the rank of Chief Engineer as assessors to advise the bench in its proceedings. 
in my view the correct solution will be to have the interstate rivers declared as nation's property and the water available should be harnessed according to the experts advice not according to the politics of a state the tenure of the chairperson will be 5 years or till he attains the age of 70 whichever is earlier the decision of the tribunal must be published by the central government in the official gazette experts believe that the provision included in the bill will help resolve the interstate water dispute in many ways they are of the opinion that the provision for setting a maximum time frame for adjudication of a water dispute is a good step nishtha malhotra with cameraman santosh yadav for rajya sabha television a point well very well made that why can't water be made a center a subject in the center's list so that because uh, so that it can be regulated and managed much more uh, efficiently and effectively so that all across india people get the required amount of water so is it possible and what needs to be done in order to really get the water into the list uh, that the center has see this the constitutional amendment uh, as as a secretary of the department i'm very happy if that is done uh, <clears throat> there is a huge you have to understand two things there is a huge temporal and special distribution issue in india if you go to the eastern part of the country people have so much water brahmaputra and ganges valley people have so much water that the per capita availability of water is between 5 to 6000 cubic meters per person per year if you go down south you go down south to penar kaveri mm -hmm. chennai Tamil Nadu areas, the water availability goes down to less than 500 cubic meters per person per year, right? So nature has given us a huge bounty. If if somehow we can bring that water where it is in excess to the areas where it is required, it would be wonderful. Having said this, two commissions, central state commissions, have considered this issue. Have recommended it already? No, they have considered this issue. Ah. Uh, Ponchi Commission and uh, Sarkaria Commission, they have considered in depth this issue whether the water should be under the union list or the state list, and their considered recommendation is that it is such a sensitive issue, it is best left to the states. It's like that. It's uh, it's a very high level body, the Central State Commissions. They have, after detailed consideration, recommended. that it is best left to the states but at the same time in our discussions in the parliament number of members number of members senior members have recommended that it should at least be in the concurrent list at least in the concurrent yeah. list is that going to in any way solve any of it, any of the problem because management wise the states have their own problem of revenue generation management and political issues if it is shifted to the center the manageability and getting more expertise and uh, you know management uh, specialization is that is it going to help just probing sir it sounds great to say that uh, all our uh, river water should be the national property but let me tell you under the present constitutional scheme nothing stops parliament from declaring under entry 56 of the union list a particular river as the national river nothing stops but no parliament uh, parliament has not done in fact parliament had enacted the river boards act way back in 1956 not one river board has been constituted mm -hmm. why the reason is the political difficulty it is very difficult to tell the states to part their rights or to surrender their rights in favor of the uh, national government the water is a very emotional issue the state governments at the local levels know the factors better how to utilize the water and how to harness it and they have the manpower if the center were to step into the state shoes Uh, they have to have a huge department of water resources at their disposal which is impossible to do mm -hmm. secondly it is also wrong to think that if center takes over the river it will be able to distribute in a manner which is satisfactory to all it is impossible again the people of one state will say well the center uh, has favored the other state the areas in the other states have been uh, given a better treatment you are not irrigated this state uh, areas in my state the whole state then gets up 
at the state level makes a representation so it all becomes nothing but a challenge to the central decision mm -hmm. which is of no use you are back to the square you mm -hmm. are challenging the central decision so it creates Do more problems it, and yes. uh, serves little more purpose impossible in fact uh, to carry addition. on with that uh -huh. yes sir the only addition which i want to make is under the river boards act 1956 which mohan referred to the bakhda bias management board is functioning very successfully mm -hmm. is one of the experiences under the river boards act it caters to different states no, it's under the river boards act. it is functioning but the board is functioning very effectively that so the states <laughs> states have found a mechanism to work effectively but what i'm trying to say is the if you look at the river godavari it starts with maharashtra karnataka telangana andhra now you can't do any of the things in in maharashtra without mm. affecting karnataka do karnataka you affect telangana i think this would be wonderful if we could have a river board act which looks at the whole basin in a in, in that particular picture. river entire big picture in that entire big picture mm. and let the chief ministers be members of that board let them decide how much water is available in godavari starting from its point which where it originates and starting ending at where it goes into the bay of bengal how do we use that water correct so they they are back with good data and then they can decide the best way to use that data. this much water is available we can't go beyond this mm. so how do we best use it i i get it um having said that um the uh, other point that we need to really understand is the chief justice is nominating the judges into this tribunal yeah. that's a very uh, i mean that's clear absolutely mm. clear yeah. in view of that do you really think what sir was proposing to have appeals in the supreme court more categorically specified in the bill or to be made part of the bill is really going to help See, Mohan has a point where Supreme Court in our country enjoys the highest credibility. Mm -hmm. There's no, you cannot argue that point. However, the fact remains that various tribunals, for example, Narmada took ten years, Krishna took seven years, Godavari took eleven years, right? Now, then, now Krishna too. is again working on it between andhra and mm. telangana the river ravi bias tribunal has taken 30 years yeah uh, yeah and still with the supreme court yeah yeah the kaveri has taken 26 years the whole idea why we had mm. considered that we should not have supreme court this thing under article 262 the central government can keep that away the supreme court uh, uh jurisdiction once a decision has mm. been taken by the tribunal so the idea was there should be some finality of the award uh -huh. if it has come after so many years which we now intend to reduce to four and a half years but it should be final correct so well, one of the things which you have done which is uh, gopal knows about it one of the things which you have done is earlier once the tribunal gave its award it had to be notified by the government of india before it became operational aha uh -huh. it became operational from the date of notification this amendment does away with it once the tribunal has given a award it comes into it's a, a judgment it's a judgment it's a judgment we cannot the government of india cannot do anything so wh how why uh, isn't that their finality in that so why do you uh, insist on uh, the supreme court taking it up and reviewing and then again settling the matter very yeah. quickly sir as secretary himself pointed out in this country the people have the uh, faith in the supreme court right anything done outside the supreme court uh, people feel that it uh, the element of politics enters although let me tell you all our tribunals are very independent and judicious autonomous yeah autonomous judicious absolutely no doubt about it but the larger perception of the people is that the tribunals are nothing but the government bodies mm -hmm. right therefore uh, to instill more confidence more acceptability in the award which the uh, uh, is given to the states it is better that the supreme court has Finally its final say it. on the matter uh. to the extent possible uh, to what extent supreme court interferes it is for it to decide mm. yeah it may be a, a just a judicial review looking into the gross errors but a supreme court's approval i think is very essential to give more acceptability to the decisions of the tribunal 
Moving on, my colleague Nishta Malhotra spoke to Dr. Gopal Krishna, Toxic Watch Alliance, and tried to get his point of view. What are the disadvantages of the bill? The bill uh, remains caught in a time warp, in the sense that uh, although it makes mention of river basin, it should have defined water dispute as river basin dispute. Because when we are dealing with uh, river basin, we, instead of referring to it as water dispute, it would be better that it should have defined the dispute in, a, in the light of newer understanding of natural science. What are the unique provisions of this bill? One tribunal and multiple benches, which can be in Delhi or it, it can be at any other place in the country. The other is the Dispute Resolution Committee, which is, all, which is quite unique because they will make an effort. There is a mechanism being created for amicable negotiation before it is referred to uh, the tribunal. Thank you, sir, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Rajya Sabha TV.